Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. Everything begins millions of years ago when the Titans ruled the Earth. However, they were overthrown by their children, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades. But the story tells us that it was Zeus who convinced Hades to create the Kraken to fight by his side. After the war, Zeus would rule the heavens, Poseidon the seas, and Hades was tricked into ruling the underworld. After this, man was created, and their prayers would feed the power of the gods, but not forever, for over time humanity began to rebel against the gods. In this world, we see a fisherman named Spiro who finds a coffin in the sea and, upon opening it, discovers a live baby in the arms of his dead mother, whom he decides to adopt and name Perseus. Over time, we find an adult Perseus with his family, who, while fishing, discover that their nets caught nothing. Spiro is irritated with the gods, knowing that much of humanity is being punished for rebellion. Spiro expresses his wish that someone could one day stop the tyranny of the gods. The next day, as the family approaches the coast to contemplate the statue of Zeus, they witness how the soldiers of Argos destroy it as a declaration of war. This causes the emergence of winged creatures that begin a massacre. Perseus wants to flee, but Spiro orders them to stay to avoid attracting attention. However, the creatures merge, materializing Ares himself, who seeing them below decides to sink the boat. The attack causes Perseus to be knocked out, but we see that his family is trapped as they slowly sink and, although Perseus tries to save them, he cannot, as he has almost no air and they are too deep. Unfortunately, this is the end of his family. Meanwhile, on Earth, in Olympus, the gods discuss how to act against the human insurrection. Some ask for a peace agreement, but Zeus, full of anger, makes it clear that there will be no agreement. At that moment, Ares appears and asks for permission to punish humanity, promising to end the offenses against the gods. Zeus accepts and gives permission for him to do his will and destroy the earth. Meanwhile, Perseus is saved by soldiers and taken to Argos. On the way, he meets Procopius, a devotee of the gods who asks for complete submission to obtain divine forgiveness. After passing through the landscape of famine and misery of the people, they reach the palace, where wealth reigns. We meet King Cepheus, the author of this war who feels victorious, Queen Cassiopeia, and Princess Andromeda. Andromeda tries to give Perseus a drink, but is stopped by the soldier Draco. Andromeda then begins a protest speech against the war, fearing a punishment that will destroy them. The queen, however, is uninterested and makes it clear that they should not fear, for the gods need them. She even mentions that they are already superior to them, using Andromeda's beauty, envied by Aphrodite herself, as an example. But, at that moment, they are interrupted by a black cloud that, after absorbing all the soldiers except Perseus, materializes into Hades himself. Hades reminds the kings that they are mere creations of the gods and forces them to kneel. Perseus tries to attack him, but changes his mind when stopped by a woman named Io. Meanwhile, Ares, who heard the queen's speech, decides to punish her by stealing her youth. He then reveals that they have 10 days to sacrifice the princess, or else the eclipse will come, or he will release the kraken to destroy the entire city. Before leaving, Hades reveals to Perseus that his father is Zeus. Hermes informs Zeus about the existence of Perseus, but he is indifferent to his son, as he never heard his prayers. In Argos, Draco is about to burn Perseus' face as an interrogation for being a demigod, but this is prevented by the king, who asks Perseus to save them with his strength. However, Perseus says that everything is false, as he is an ordinary man. However, later, when he returns to his cell, Perseus receives a visit from Io. She introduces herself as someone who was punished with eternal youth for rejecting a god and reveals that she was the one who took care of Perseus until he found his family. Io then tells Perseus that he really is the son of Zeus and begins to recount how, in the past, when King Acrisius led an attack on Olympus, Zeus decided to punish him by disguising himself to lie with his queen. When the king arrives at his quarters, he sees Zeus. Knowing what had just happened, Acrisius orders the death of his wife and son, that is, Perseus. Back then, after Acrisius was struck by lightning and transformed into a monster as punishment, he threw the coffin into the sea with his last strength, where only Perseus survived. Io mentions that Perseus was born to kill the Kraken, which would weaken Ares enough to defeat him. This convinces Perseus to accept the king's mission as he seeks revenge. Once a small army is assembled, Draco does not miss the opportunity to make it clear to Perseus that they are all heading to certain death, all for his desire for vengeance. Thus, in search of knowledge on how to kill the Kraken, 
they begin the journey to the Witches of Fate. But before leaving the city, two hunter brothers, Kukuk and Ozil, join them, earning a place for their knowledge in mythological beings. Meanwhile, Ares meets with the former King Acrisius, now called Calibas, and convinces him to work together in the shadows against Zeus. Ares empowers Calibas and orders him to assassinate Perseus. Back with the soldiers, Perseus notices the presence of gods following them. Draco decides to start training him and, although at first Perseus seems to be like any other soldier, soon his instincts surface, making him easily defeat Draco. Later, something unexpected happens, Zeus' interest in his son grows so much that he decides to give him a sword, but Perseus rejects it and hands it to Draco. The soldiers in the forest hear screams, and when they go to check, they find Calibas dismembering a soldier. The battle begins with Perseus being humiliated, as he cannot withstand the blows and is even bitten. However, the others arrive and save him, cutting off Calibos's hand. Surrounded, Calibas decides to flee and they go after him. The severed hand transforms into a scorpion. Nearby, the soldiers once again surround Calibas, but from his blood, giant scorpions begin to sprout. Calibas manages to escape. A new battle begins, where they are easily overwhelmed and many die. Perseus is attacked, but Io helps him not to be killed. Draco demonstrates his combat experience as the only one who can kill one of the beasts. Perseus is attacked again, and for a moment everyone thinks he is dead beneath the creature. Fortunately, he killed it and pierced its body, coming out from the back of the monster. Although Perseus is lucky to come out of the stomach of a scorpion, they are soon surrounded and it seems like the end, but they receive help from beings called Jinn, who use magic to stop the scorpions. Perseus plans to thank them, but suddenly he begins to suffer from the venom of Calibos's bite. Draco advises Perseus to ask for strength from Zeus, but he refuses. Meanwhile, in Argos, Andromeda witnesses how Procopius and his followers prepare her altar for sacrifice. With Perseus, who worsens every moment, Io goes to get water and one of the jinn, named Suleiman, approaches him and uses his magic to burn his wound. The soldiers think it's an attack, starting a battle that lasts little, as soon Perseus is shown to be cured. The jinn mention that they will join them, as they also seek vengeance against the gods. Draco reprimands Perseus for not using the gifts of the gods to fight, but he continues to refuse, as he does not want to be like them. The jinn demonstrate their usefulness by transforming the scorpions into means of transport, crossing the desert and mountains until they reach the Stygian Garden, where the Kraken defeated the Titans. The soldiers find the Witches of Fate, who share a single eye. They recognize Perseus by his blood and know why he came. Before speaking, they demand a sacrifice and attack one of the soldiers. Perseus manages to obtain their eye and forces them to reveal how to defeat the Kraken. The Witches say that only the petrifying gaze of Medusa can defeat it, but to get to her, they must cross the river Styx of the Underworld. Before they leave, the Witches decide to take revenge, telling Perseus that it is written in fate that he will die. After that, when Perseus is alone, he meets Zeus, who advises him not to continue with his mission or he will die, as the witches predicted. Zeus offers him a sanctuary as a god for being his son. However, Perseus rejects Zeus' offer, who then gives him a gold coin as a last gift and leaves. Moments later, the brothers Ozil and Kukuk give him a scorpion shield as a farewell gift, as they are not willing to go to the underworld, but we see that the others accept the risk and continue. Thus, they reach the bank of the river, where Perseus' coin is used to call Sharon, the ferryman. During the journey, Io explains that she cannot help them, as the laws forbid women from entering Medusa's temple. After the journey, they finally reach the end of the road and find the temple. Once inside, Medusa quickly notices their presence and begins by injuring Draco, as well as sending other soldiers into the fire. She continues petrifying the younger soldiers. Then, Perseus decides to draw Medusa's attention to make her come out of the shadows, thus giving Suleiman a chance to attack. Suleiman misses his attack and is captured by Medusa, but her gaze does not work on him. With no other options, Suleiman sacrifices himself and explodes, taking advantage of his proximity. Although it doesn't hurt her much, it gives Draco enough time to use a rock to pin her to the ground, and although he is petrified soon after, it allows Perseus to cut off Medusa's head. He leaves the temple victorious and is about to reunite with Io when suddenly Calibas arrives and stabs her. A new battle begins, and Perseus finds himself at a disadvantage, but when he sees Io's life in danger, he decides to use the sword that Zeus gave him. 
With it, he not only manages to injure Calibas but also corners and kills him. At that moment, Calibas returns to being human and, before falling, asks Perseus not to become like the gods. After this, Perseus has to sadly say goodbye to Io, who turns into golden dust and rises to the sky. However, he receives help from Pegasus, a black horse with wings, and soon begins the journey back to Argos. Meanwhile, in Olympus, Hades is ordered to release the Kraken. We see that from the depths of the ocean begins to emerge Ares' son. In Argos, Procopius leads his followers to the palace to capture Andromeda and tie her to the altar, preparing to sacrifice her. The Kraken arrives and begins to destroy part of the city, reflected in the death of the people. In Olympus, Hades reveals to Zeus that it was all part of his plan, as all that death only strengthens him, and now with this power, he can subjugate Zeus. Zeus reminds Hades that Perseus is still in the battle, so Hades goes to stop him. When Perseus arrives in Argos, Hades disappears and sends creatures against him. One of them manages to steal Medusa's head, starting a chase through the city while Argos continues to be destroyed. Perseus is not alone, as he receives help from the brothers Ozil and Kukuk on their scorpions. The moment of truth arrives, and the Kraken fully emerges, showing its monstrous fury. Seeing that little time is left, Perseus takes a risk, jumping from Pegasus to recover Medusa's head. After recovering it, he falls on the altar and, after striking some subjects, including Procopius, climbs to the top to reveal Medusa's head in front of the feared Kraken's eyes. Seeing this, Procopius tries to stop him, but the king stops him and is stabbed by the fanatic. Then, we see that the Kraken petrifies before it can attack, causing part of its body to fall on Procopius and the king, and another part makes Andromeda fall into the water. Shortly after, Hades appears to face Perseus, but this time it's different, as Perseus uses his sword to summon one of Zeus's lightning bolts, with which he manages to expel him and exile him to the underworld. Then, Perseus dives into the water, swims through the debris, and rescues Andromeda. Upon waking up, the beautiful Andromeda asks Perseus to stay in Argos to reign by her side, but he prefers to continue being just a man and leaves on Pegasus. Later, at what was once Zeus's altar, Perseus is visited by his father, who, as a reward for his acts, offers him a place in Olympus again. However, Perseus once again refuses. Zeus respects his decision and, as a demonstration of affection, revives Io. Time passes and ten years later, we see that Io has died and Perseus now has a son named Helios. They live together on the coast as fishermen. One night, Zeus decides to visit them to warn that now that humanity has stopped praying to the gods, they are weakening and run the risk of becoming mere mortals and finally dying. This is being exploited by Kronos, who from Tartarus is expelling his demons to Earth, and if this situation worsens, he will soon escape from his prison. To prevent this, Zeus asks Perseus to join the gods in their fight, but Perseus refuses to abandon his son. However, that same night, in his dreams, Perseus has a premonition. He sees underworld creatures killing everyone around him, and a large hand of fire emerging from the ground and then sweeping the whole place. On the other hand, we see that in the depths of the earth, Zeus, Poseidon, and Ares, Zeus's other son, who considers Perseus a coward for his decision, gather. Together, they arrive at Tartarus, the great prison of the underworld, where they are received by Hades. Zeus asks for permission to enter and rebuild the walls of Tartarus, but Hades decides to betray him and makes his creatures attack them and one of them ends up leaving Poseidon is dead. Ares also attacks and subdues Zeus, showing that he is on his uncle's side. With this, from the fissures of the earth emerges a chimera and begins to attack Perseus' city. Seeing this and not knowing where his son is, Perseus decides to use the sword that Zeus gave him. It doesn't take long to find Helios and that's when he understands that the chimera is after his son. At one moment, Helios finds himself cornered, and Perseus decides to attract the beast to him to face it with his body. He is very lucky, as the beast gets trapped in nets and chains. However, brutally it soon frees itself and drags Perseus along the beach. Fortunately, he gets up and with his strength manages to chain and trick the two-headed chimera, so that it self-destructs, burning to death. After this, Perseus and Helios reach Mount of Idols, where he tries to communicate with Zeus. However, it is Poseidon who answers his call. Poseidon explains that Hades and Ares have joined the Titans against humanity and that the other gods have disappeared. Therefore, the only hope is to free Zeus, who is imprisoned in the underworld. Poseidon knows it's a lot for Perseus, so he advises him to join forces with his son, another demigod named Aegeanor, who is in Argos and knows the way to Tartarus. 
Poseidon asks that if Agenor proves worthy, Perseus should give him his trident, and then disintegrates into dust. Meanwhile, Hades reveals to Zeus that they have decided to help Kronos, as he has promised to maintain their immortality once he is free. After saying goodbye to his son, who gives him a wooden amulet, Perseus begins his journey with Pegasus. He soon arrives in Argos, where he is almost attacked for being mistaken for a chimera, but is saved by being recognized by Andromeda. Once on land, the entire army honors him for his fame in the battle against the Kraken. There he reunites with Andromeda, and with her help, finds Aginor, who turns out to be just a thief. Aginor, Poseidon's bastard son, is convinced by Perseus, who reveals they are cousins, as Perseus is the son of Zeus, who is already dead, and asks him to lead him to Tartarus in exchange for his freedom. Aginor agrees and Andromeda also joins the journey. At sea, Aginor mentions that Tartarus is the god Hephaestus, but Perseus explains to Andromeda that Hephaestus is the god who forged Poseidon's trident, Hades' pitchfork, and Zeus' lightning bolt, which together form the Spear of Triumphant, the weapon with which the gods defeated Kronos. Aginor receives Poseidon's trident, and by embedding it in the boat, they can trace the route to the secret island of Kai, where Hephaestus is hiding. In the underworld, Hades takes Zeus to the presence of Kronos, who is still imprisoned. Later, the group arrives at the island. Once on land, inside the forest, they soon begin to fall into the traps of the place. When some soldiers plan to pray to Hades, Perseus warns them that if they do, he will come and kill them. However, they cannot avoid the traps, and the first to fall is Aginor, who suddenly disappears. The group discovers that their attackers are the Cyclops. Perseus and the others are attacked, while Andromeda and her soldier hide. Out of fear, the woman starts praying but is silenced before finishing. Unfortunately, Andromeda is found and is about to be crushed. Perseus ends up facing a cyclops and injures his hand to avoid being crushed, and uses one of the traps to knock out the giant. Fortunately, he has the trident and uses it to threaten the other cyclops who arrive, who seeing that Perseus is capable of using Poseidon's trident, return Aginor, and surrender to him. Meanwhile, Hades, somewhat regretful for having betrayed his brother, watches as Kronos begins to drain the power of Zeus. On the island, the Cyclops lead the crew to Hephaestus' residence. Initially, Hephaestus confuses them with his parents, but on closer inspection, recognizes Perseus for his feet against the Kraken. Perseus asks for his help to rescue Zeus, but Hephaestus refuses, as he no longer has divine powers. Then, Andromeda intervenes and, observing her closely, Hephaestus remembers Aphrodite, his ex-wife, and decides to help them. He explains how he created Tartarus, in which he made a path to its core, from where he escaped once the prison was created. Meanwhile, Hades tries to explain to Zeus that what he is doing is out of fear, since, unlike humans, when the gods die, they simply disappear and are forgotten. Later, when Perseus and the others arrive at the gates of Tartarus, they are surprised by the arrival of Ares. While Perseus begins to fight his brother, Hephaestus manages to open the door to the secret path. As Ares is very strong, they cannot enter in time, and the door begins to close. Seeing this, Hephaestus decides to use his staff to block the door and confront Ares. Thanks to his sacrifice, they manage to enter in time. Once inside, Aginor decides to take Hephaestus's map, taking advantage of his experience in navigation, and begins to guide them through the constantly changing labyrinth. After walking without really advancing, they start to argue, as Perseus asks for the map to try to read it, which makes Aginor irritated. When they come across a wall that closes, making them lose sight of it, they start to move quickly, following Aginor's instincts, until they reach a platform that plunges them into a trap. Moments later, Andromeda gets trapped and is about to be crushed by the walls. To save her, Perseus and Aginor join forces and, although they manage, Perseus falls away from them. Then, before their eyes, his son appears, but Perseus knows it's just an illusion, and this is confirmed when, suddenly, he is attacked by the Minotaur. The fight begins with Perseus taking a beating, but after freeing himself, he manages to pin the Minotaur against the columns and, with strong blows, manages to break a horn, with which he stabs the Minotaur in the heart until it dies. Shortly after, as a reward for his victory, the labyrinth reorganizes itself, and thus he rejoins the others at the entrance to Tartarus. Nearby, once Kronos has drained the power of Zeus, he, with his last strength, asks Hades for forgiveness for banishing him to be the king of the underworld and, after making it clear that he has not forgiven his betrayal, asks to be freed. He is about to do so, but is stopped by Ares, who tries to assassinate Zeus using his father's lightning bolt. Zeus, still conscious, denies the lightning bolt to Ares. At that moment, Hades stands up and, by surprising his nephew, manages to push him away from Zeus. 
Meanwhile, we see that Perseus finally reaches his father, just when Kronos was freeing himself. He manages to break Zeus's bindings, and Hades is about to finish his work, but is interrupted by Ares, although he cannot prevent Ares from stabbing his pitchfork into his father. However, Zeus and Perseus join their weapons and manage to teleport to the surface, without realizing that Perseus left his son's wooden sword in Ares' sight. After these events, once Zeus is taken to rest, the god of lightning leaves the rest of the battle to Perseus, as he is on the verge of death. Perseus understands that, to form the Spear of Triumphant, he needs the lightning bolt of Zeus, which is in the hands of his brother, so he decides to challenge him to a battle. As he walks away, we see that the rest of the army begins to prepare, covering themselves with mud to protect themselves from Kronos's fire, taking positions on the battlefield. Moments later, everyone witnesses the eruption of a volcano, announcing Kronos releasing his soldiers from the underworld. The battle begins in the trenches led by Aegenor, while Andromeda waits in the cavalry. On the other hand, Perseus reaches Ares, where he discovers that he has his son Helios as a hostage. However, Ares says he does not plan to kill him, as he wants to see his father die in his place. Thus begins the battle between the two brothers. Ares is stronger, disarms Perseus, and easily knocks him down, then begins to beat him while his son watches everything. Perseus tries to react, striking him with a stone, but does not achieve much. Meanwhile, Kronos's creatures continue with their massacre without much opposition from the humans. Hades appears again and, seeing the situation, decides to reach his brother and, after forgiving him for banishing him, shares part of his power to keep him from death. Thus, both gods decide to join the battle like old times. On the other hand, seeing the state of his father, Helios tries to confront his uncle, which gives Perseus enough time to stand up and reach Ares, where he manages to stab him first with his son's wooden sword and then with Zeus's lightning bolt, killing him forever. But the real battle finally begins, as Kronos finally comes out of Tartarus. At the same time, Perseus, already with the three pieces, manages to form the Spear of Triumphant. Outside, Zeus begins to attack his father with his lightning bolts, but it is not enough for the Grand Titan. Perseus arrives, but cannot get close enough because of Kronos's fire. Then, Zeus and Hades join forces to attack, and this time they manage to cause enough damage for Perseus to approach and, once the spear is activated, enter inside, cutting it from within and ends up throwing the spear, making him explode and thus defeating him. The battle ends, and we see that, like Andromeda, who is still alive, Perseus reunites with Hades and his father, who was waiting for him with his last strength. Zeus explains that he has no strength left and Hades cannot save him. He advises Perseus to use his powers wisely and, after saying goodbye thanking him, dies and disappears as dust under Perseus's tears. After that, Hades reveals to his nephew that all his power is also gone and, ironically, comments that perhaps now he can be stronger. Later, on the advice and help of Aginor, who distracts his son, Perseus approaches Andromeda and, this time, finally kisses her, making it clear that he wishes to be by her side. And before the day ends, Perseus hands his sword to Helios so that he remembers with pride that he is the son of a hero and grandson of gods. 